Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Barmy Army Meets. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Chris Millard from the Barmy Army. As many of you will be familiar with now, Barmy Army Meets is in partnership with Opening Up. Opening Up promote mental well-being and suicide prevention through cricket. They deliver sessions with clubs and offer resources online with a focus on positive mental health. Since 2014, they've been saying it's not weak to speak to encourage conversation on what is such an important topic. Be sure to check them out on social media or at openingup.com. Sorry, openingupcricket.com. A huge thank you once again to all of our members who are key workers from the NHS frontline staff to the shelf stackers in the supermarket. You're keeping the country running and I want to thank you from all at the Barmy Army. If you haven't managed to catch up with our latest episodes on Barmy Army Meets, be sure to check them out. Past six weeks have brought us Mark Wood, Sam Curran, Liam Plunkett, Joe Denley, Chris Wokes and Don Bess. Around five hours of viewing if you've got nothing to do this weekend. I'd also like to mention our podcast. Now, this week saw us have a bumper show with two very special guests, England captain Joe Root and his brother, Glamorgan player Billy Root and, and Barmy Army ambassador. They uh, opened up on tales of living together, growing up together and then transforming through cricket into the very top level and playing against each other. Very um, famously, one brother hit the other brother for six to win the game. I won't tell you who that is yet. Check it out. Shackles are off in your normal podcast places. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Barmy legend, England hero, Yorkshire, Nottinghamshire and dancing on ice legend as well. Ryan Sidebottom is going to tell us all about life on tour with England cricket and answer all of the questions. Right now we are um, we're building a nice audience here. So um, everyone, thanks for tuning in. We just had a little technical issue um, just when we linked everything up. So now we're all back online. We're going to go ahead and we're going to have a good old chat to um, Ryan and find out how he's doing. First of all, mate, you've um, you've just got married, haven't you? Yeah, just got married on the seventh of March. Um, we were, God, we were so so lucky. We, we, it was. Um, yeah, it's one of those special days, like an amazing day. You know, all of the friends and family there, but we just got it in before lockdown and, and COVID. So we were we were pretty fortunate, to be honest. Really fortunate. Pretty good time. Well, we've still got a bit of stick. Everyone's going, how could you? How could you? Why did you? What were you doing? Like, social, what happened to social distancing? We're like, no, we, we did it before it all happened. So, well, yeah, we, we were pretty lucky uh, to get wed. But then 10 weeks of isolation. Um, we're probably getting divorced in it in a couple of weeks' time. Is that the um, is that the biggest test, a newlywed test, like a, a good? Yes. Oh, she's here listening. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. She's like going, yes, yes. I've already created a space in the patio to put them under. Oh, very... yeah. She's already dug a hole in the patio to just put me under because she's had enough of me already. <laughs> but I've heard you've been um, you've assumed the role of teacher, PE teacher. How's that been? Stress, stressful, mate. Honestly, it is. I mean, I I wasn't the brightest at school, and four plus four was was pretty difficult for me. So when the kids are going equations and um, all other kinds of stuff, geometry and all, oh, it's like honestly, it's rid- Pisces. It's ridiculous. I'm like, uh, ring your mum, ring your mum. Yeah, I'm so stressed out. But you know, it's it's all good fun, and the kids are kids are having a good time and. Yeah, I can't wait. That's probably why I'm actually drinking more because, <laughs> like, three o'clock, once school finishes, it's like, oh, it's over. There's no more maths till tomorrow. So you have a glass of red, get the glass of red open. What's the schedule like then? Is it maths, English, then an afternoon of PE, or when does that come into play? Yeah, it's um, it's like an hour's maths, then a little bit of a break, then an hour's English, um, then a bit of a break and lunchtime. Then it is science, geography, history, French. Yeah. I mean, and then that's it. Finish at three o'clock and then PE afterwards. So you think PE was my forte, but <laughs> honestly, I'm a bit of a slob now. I don't really tend to do much training. So when the kids are like, Dad, will you take us? We play cricket and stuff. I'm like, yeah, OK, go on then, I will. Yeah, I've taken to retirement well. That's what you should say to them. Now, um, Yeah, exactly. You, you must have utilised that knowledge on a recent question of sport appearance. How did that go? It was it was good, yeah. It was good fun. I mean, again, I, I saw I was, was on the show when I was twenty the first time, and oh, I always dread, used to love question of sport. Yeah. And growing up, you're always like, oh, if I end up, you know, playing cricket or professional sport, question of sport is the one you want to go on. And um, so yeah, I've been lucky to go on a, on a few occasions, and 
yeah, it's just good fun. You, you know, you have a couple of beers before and then you go out and you, you take the mick out of each other. I mean, the show's only, what, half, half an hour, is it? And you're sort of filming for about an hour and a half. Um, and it's all just, you know, tongue-in-cheek, lots of fun. And they generally cut a lot of the fun stuff out. But, it's <laughs> yeah, it's good banter. And, yeah, I don't think Matt Dawson and Tuff was like me on their team because, honestly, I am horrendous at my cricket questions. <laughs> I absolutely panic stations i get really stressed because honestly i'm so forgetful and i haven't got a clue what goes on in the cricket world i normally <laughs> watch rugby league and i, I know you're the bar me i mean i shouldn't really say that but i generally don't know my knowledge on cricket is horrendous yeah well no absolutely if you've played at the top level i think you're allowed to have horrendous knowledge because you've been there and done it but um rugby league you say big fan who do you support well i'm a i'm a mighty bulls Bradford bulls fan um my dad's when he was sort of when he was still at Yorkshire, um, he used to take me all over because um, he lo- he absolutely loved rugby league, and he used to go to a pub, the Town Hall Tavern in the centre of Leeds, um, and all the Leeds Rhinos played Gary Schofield and um, Bobby Golden all used to go in there drinking, and Dad would be drinking, and he'd push me in the corner and give me pints of coke and packets of Chris and uh, shove me out of the way while he got tanked up with all the all the rugby lads, and I sort of had that growing up, and he. He used to take me everywhere, and my very first game was a Bradford Bulls, so that was the team I sort of always followed. And I mean, I love my rugby league; I think it's a great sport. But yeah. I'm just a, a sporty person. I love watching any sports: golf, rugby union, anything cricket. Just you know, I like being and, and watching other sports and athletes going at it. That's it. It's the toughest test at the minute, I think, for major sports fans. There is like nothing to watch. I've never seen so many people suddenly decide on a Bundesliga football team. With the weekend coming up and the launch, it's going to be massive, isn't it? I mean, there's so you can can imagine England fans watching German football. It just it's unheard of. But I reckon so many will be watching it, like with a can in hand or a, or a glass of wine, a couple of beers, watching German football. It'd be just totally different. It'd be ridiculous. <laughs> it will be. It will be now. And um, I'm going to kick off with my first proper question, cricket related question to you, City. Now, how does bowling in a T20 World Cup final stack up against going on Dancing on Ice for the first time? Oh, uh, absolutely. I can't really swear because the kids are hanging around. It's a piece of cake bowling in a World Cup final. Dancing on Ice, I, it was when I got there, I was I was coaching Surrey at the time. Yeah. And it was in the summer and they sort of, you know, asked me, uh, would I be interested in going on the show? I had to meet the producers. I turned up in a 2-2 and uh, sweat bands and headband and <laughs> Uh, for about 20 minutes, spoke to these two two ladies and then they had an American pro skater and honestly, he literally chucked me around for 20 minutes uh, and just flung me around and I was like, there's no way they're going to ask me to come on this show because I am Bambi on ice and then two weeks later, like, oh, we'd love to have you on. It was the hardest thing I've ever done. Was I mean, I, I, was, I wasn't very good. How? On and... I said, yeah, it's a bit weird, sort of. The first night, we all sort of, as, as a 12 uh, that was going to be on the show, we went, we were staying in a hotel down south somewhere. And I'm just sat there and there's like a melody from the Pussycat Dolls and Brian McFadden from Westlife. And I'm like, I'm like ringing Maddie up and going, my, my girlfriend, who my wife now, we were there. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. It's ridiculous. I'm just sat here with all these really, really famous people and they're just... <laughs> A normal cricket lad, I'm just sat in the corner drinking a pint of beer. It's like, what is this all about? <laughs> well, it was good fun. It really was good fun. Were you a good skater before that or did you learn quite quickly? No, never ever skated in my entire life. So when I I, would, I trained at Bradford Ice Arena and I thought, you know what, I, you know, I played a bit of cricket and I, you know, I'll have a little bit of balance and I should be okay. I'll pick it up easy. Not, it was never the case. I spent more time cleaning the ice with my backside. You know, my partner Brandy at the time, she just used to laugh because it was like the QE2, just falling and like absolutely slapping on the ground and everyone would go, oh, and I'd just get back up and crack on. But yeah, it was, it was yeah, really tough, really tough. I bet it was, I bet it was. Now, um, we're going to move into some cricket questions. Now, Adam's asked on the live stream, which England team from the past would you have liked to play in if you could play in any? Good question. Uh, Honestly, I would have to say, you know, I suppose a team, you know, this this current team. I mean, it's so it's so brilliant to watch, isn't it? The you know the brand of cricket that they're playing. It's yeah. it's so exciting, and you know they go out there and play with that that no fear and that freedom that everyone wants to see. 
Um, and it's great, you know, they, they bat all the way down. They've got a brilliant bowling attack. You know, you had Joffre Arch who came into mix as well. So this this team is absolutely outstanding and it's run so well, you know, with Owen Morgan. And, um, you know, it's just so exciting to watch. You know, I suppose in the past you could argue, you might say, oh, there's Kevin Peterson. Um, you know, he puts bums on seats. There's, I don't know, Graham Thorpe or a Graham Gooch, a Darren Goff. Yeah. Whereas now you can probably go from 1 to 11 and say, wow, this team is so exciting and, and brilliant to see. So the, I would say this current team, you know, not just because what they've done, but how they go about the business. And also, I think as a cricketer, you're also viewed how you are as a person, like away from the game. Yeah. And I think this team is very um, approachable. You know, you see now after the game, they go to the fans and they sign autographs and they give cuddles out and, you know, they have fun. And I, I think that's what, what it's all about, is having that, that contact with the fans as well, not just, oh, we're an England team, we're doing really well, see you all later, we'll go play the next game. And, and for me, that that means it means a lot to very many people. Yeah, absolutely true. Very true. Good answer to that. Now, Tom Jackson has asked, um, he said, Ryan, you've had a long career. Did you ever start playing with and against someone then end up playing with or against their son? i.e. Johnny and David Bairstow. <laughs> well, yeah, I used to bowl. I used to bowl at David and my dad on the boundary at Scarborough. Um, and then all of a sudden you, you're playing against Johnny and then we're in the same team together. And so, yeah, it's, um, it, it's weird because Matt Fisher, when he, made, when he made his debut at Yorkshire, was like, oh, uh, Sidney, um, I wasn't even born um, when you made your debut. I was like, oh, cheers, thanks for that. Feel old, yeah. I really appreciate it, but... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, look, Johnny, you know, knowing knowing the history of the club and my dad and his dad were, were great friends, you know, on and off the field. So to sort of, you know, father and son, as it were, you know, it's sort of proud that, you know, knowing his career and, and seeing Johnny Johnny now, what he's doing, you know, it's um, it's really good to see. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm right in thinking you're Johnny's godfather. Yeah, so Johnny's godfather to my son, Darley. Oh, um, so yeah, they've always Brilliant. we've always been associated with with the best stores ever since I was I was a young boy. So it, it hasn't changed ever ever since. Uh, very good. Now he's doing very well. Now I'm sure he'd be very proud. Now we've got a question from um, Warwick. What's your favourite ever Yorkshire wicket? That's a tough question. You take a lot. Oh, I'd, God, honestly, I I can't really say. I'd have to say, you know, there's always teams that you you go up against that you may not quite like, or there's always a little bit of nitty gritty. So I, I suppose Somerset were always that not a bogey team, and we didn't we want we dislike them, mm-hmm. but probably you know playing against Somerset headily and and you know yeah. getting the, getting one over on on the team is that's quite nice. But generally, honestly, I can't remember. I don't know what I had for breakfast, so I can't remember who was my best wicket. <laughs> I've not got wicket. a clue. <laughs> Oh dear. Now, the next question we've got in is a question regarding who was your best mate in the England dressing room um, throughout your career? Who's your best mate in the England team? Uh, I'd have to say Swanee, because uh, he was he was at Tre- he was at Knotts as well when I was there, and he, you know, everyone knows Swanee's a you know an absolute character, and you know he never shuts up, always laughing, always joking. Um, yeah, and funny story actually during the during the World Cup final. Um, you know, when we we started off, I always stupidly stood next to him um, singing the national anthem before we went out to play the game. And he always sung in a operatic Pavarotti voice, blurting it out. And the camera always panned across you. And I just could never stop laughing. And I was like, Swanee, please don't do it. It's World Cup final. Don't do it today, please. And he just <laughs> and he's just like, please don't laugh, don't laugh. But yeah, me and him, you know, we, we sort of yeah have a lot of banter and, and we still keep in touch regular. And funnily enough, we didn't actually watch. Uh, when we battered, me and Swanee sat in the toilet and just chatted the whole time because we were so ridiculously nervous. Brilliant. Very good. I can just imagine that right now. Now, uh, Maka Nixon has asked, of all the wickets... Um... Oh, what's your biggest standout wicket? I th- assume he's asking for. I know we asked you the Yorkshire one, but what's the yeah. most memorable wicket you've ever taken? Oh, I'd have to. I'd have to probably say, oh, probably Jack Callis. Yeah. Um. Yeah, getting Jack Callis. You know, it's weird. You, you don't have a a person, a player that you. Oh, I, I always get him out. But 
you know, you always want to pick your wits against the best. And I, I some for some reason, I've got him out on a on a few occasions. And you know, he's a, an amazing, fine, fine player, isn't he? So it's always it's always nice to get someone out like that. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I can't speak for myself, so I've never done it, but I can imagine. <laughs> now, Ned Holmes has asked a question. He always asks, "Can you name your top three grounds that you've ever played at?" Yeah. Um, well, I'd probably say Trent Bridge and Yorks because I played at those two grounds. Yeah. But I'd have to say probably look, Lords. Lords is special for the history, and I'm sure a lot of players, you know, going through the long room and you know the history of the place. The the lunches are exceptional, so that gets my vote. And then probably Scarbados. I mean, you know, times have changed now in the in the world of professionalism, and you you know players go to bed early and they they don't have much to drink. I mean, when I first started, you'd you do 10 pubs on the way back to the hotel, <laughs> having played the, finished the day's play at Scarborough. Right. And you'd have fish and, dirty fish and chips, and then you'd probably go back and get your clubbing gear on, and then go out in Scarborough on the night, and then you bowl 30 overs the next day. So, you know, that was probably probably Scarborough and, and Headley and, and Lords. Yeah, very good. And I've heard Scarborough's quite a good night out as well, isn't it? Scarborough used to be a great night out. Berlin's was awesome, like sticky carpet, old school. <laughs> Pound a bottle, absolutely immense. I mean, you I've never seen the lads get changed as quick and run off the field at Scarborough <laughs> to make sure they got near to the front at Berlin's on a whatever Wednesday night because it was like pound a pint. It was it was awesome. Brilliant. Very good. Now Lisa Brink has asked, thanks again for watching. Lisa watches every week. She's asked Italy. what is your best spell you've ever witnessed whilst being on the field? Yeah. You know, I've been lucky enough to see quite see quite a few. I'd, I'd probably, you know, I'd probably say Steve Steve Harmison. I can't remember where it was. He bowled a, a, a brilliant spell, and also probably Stuart Broad in Sri Lanka. Um, you know, the ball wasn't doing much, and I think he'd just sort of come into the game. He, he might it might have been his second test or third test, and you know, he made the batsman quite high quality batsman play a miss on a docile pitch in Sri Lanka. Yeah, in what eighty degree. He, um, you know, he sort of knew then that he had the potential to become a a regular for England, and and there you have it. You know, look what he's done now. I mean, it's absolutely awesome, isn't it? So, yeah. you know, it's always nice actually. You know, when you're down at fine leg and you you see another fast bowler running in and and bouncing and he's carrying thirty yards. You know, there's no greater sight. You know, especially when they're standing three yards back to me, it's uh, <laughs> it's quite nice to watch. <laughs> Very good. Now, Dean Sayers, big Barmy Army member, travels all over. Said um, New Zealand tour 2008, side bottom, side bottom, swings it through the air, superb. Took the winning catch in Wellington. It's his favourite tour ever. What are your memories of that tour? I, you know, you always, I suppose, over my career, I have fond memories. But yeah, you know, I remember the Barmy Army being absolutely immense. And my, you know, my parents were there when I took my hat trick in New in New Zealand, and yeah, yeah, it was just a really nice, nice tour in terms of taking wickets and doing well. But it was just a great tour all in all, you know, with the the amount of Barmy Army that you support you, and you know, my dad never ever watched. He was an absolute nightmare because <laughs> he was a nervous wreck, and he was there on that day, and it was weird because I both saw them, and at the end of the game, they came up to me, and even Dad gave me a hug. <laughs> and and he bought me a bottle of whiskey and I, he loves whiskey but I absolutely hate whiskey but I had no option to have a bit of a sip of it but he yeah it's sort of a special tour you know you always remember those tours where you do well and and you help the team win um but that was yeah New Zealand very special place and like I say the Barmy Army were absolutely outstanding quality now would you say that's your favourite tour would you say that one in particular or or, or does it have to be the tour that was the T Twenty World Cup. Uh, you know, I think a lot all tours are different. You know, you, you Chris and the Bar Miami guys, you've been all over the world. They're all yeah. all different in terms of, you know, different continents and people and how friendly everyone is. So I can't really specifically say one one tour that I've been on that I've really I've enjoyed them all. You know, even Bangladesh, you know, you, you think, oh Bangladesh, you know, third world country and yeah. you know, there was a pizza hut across the road. <laughs> you know, and there was rats running through across over the bed, and that actually is a tour you always remember because it was so much fun. You're like, lads, I didn't get any sleep last night. A massive rat just ran over my head. <laughs> or there was the biggest spider I've ever seen, and just stuff like that. You know, the memories of you make as a as a team, and you know that sort of um, 
group camaraderie that's always built when you go on tours and you they're not ideal, but you just make the most of it. Absolutely. Were you playing in the areas where England teammates used to share rooms? Was that still? Yeah. Who was your roomie? Yeah. Oh, I've had I've had a sh- I've had a few. <laughs> John John Lu- John Lewis. I've shared room with John Lewis. <laughs> shared with Swanee Swanee quite a few times. Entertaining. Uh, uh, very entertaining. Very. We didn't get much sleep. <laughs> um, I mean, I. I remember my, my debut when I played for Yorkshire and, you know, it was like a big drinking culture. I was only 18 and, you know, it was like you played hard, but afterwards you met, you know, you went out and you had a few beers and yeah. um, it was my first tour. And I, I think I, I got a lift with Bradley Parker and we were playing away somewhere and um, I was dying for a number two. Like literally it was touching my underpants and he, he <laughs> veered off twice. I pretended to veer off at the services and pull back on the motorway. <laughs> so literally, when I got to Cardiff, he was literally in my pants, <laughs> and he thought it was hilarious. Okay. And and that was my first time. And then that night, like they took me out, and I got I got in at half four um, on a milk float with a milkman gave me a lift. And um, he said, "You're playing cricket tomorrow, aren't you?" And I did. You know, I was like, "Yeah, yeah." He goes, "Oh, you can have a lift with me." So he dropped me back at the hotel, um, and then I played all the next day. And then that evening, you always had, on the second night, you always had um, like a, a team meal and a few drinks. And I had to do the Royal Toast. At the time, I didn't know what the Royal Toast was. So I just stood up and I said any old thing. And literally, I'd had like four pints as an 18-year-old. And I was sat next to the scorer. And I chundered mink chop chip ice cream all over the scorer. <laughs> literally, I covered him because I was so drunk. And I'd only had four pints. And that was, that was my debut. So you, you kind of remember those, you know, those moments. And the lads absolutely killed me on my debut. I, like I was bowling the next day and I, I was so hungover, I could hardly see. How did you get on in the game? <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I, got, I think I got three for or something, three for oh. 70. So it was, I did all right, I think. Brilliant. Very good. Now, we've, we've had a question off the live stream from Gary. What's the most memorable game that you've ever been a part of? Um... It'd have to be the world, you know, the World Cup. I mean, Yorkshire winning back-to-back titles is, is one that sticks out in my mind. But it'd have to be winning the World Cup. You know, in 2009, we were we were horrendous. We played, you know, we got knocked out. You know, we lost to Holland. Um, so, yeah, to go for 2010, you know, the celebrations, being in the Caribbean, as you know yourself, Chris, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, hard um, isn't too bad, is it? Yeah, so it was, it was just a great, you know, when England have not, won a global tournament for many, many years. And, you know, we probably surprised a lot of teams and how we played as a team, um, you know, it's yeah. part of history, but the celebrations were immense. How much, that that tournament in particular, how much do you put it down to KP playing a massive influence? It, was it was it huge? Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's massive. I mean, you, you know, T20, the beauty of it, you, individ, you know, generally over a season, you would say the team wins you, tournaments um they have to be consistent but in t20 one individual can win you a game yeah and he was you could sort of see that you know even when we got off the plane he had that steely determination and you know he set the bar so high for us on that tour you know we played some great cricket it was so entertaining um all 11 contributed but i mean he was he was different class i mean he he plays shots that I've never, I mean, now, but I've never, ever seen other players. And and also against, you know, the likes of Shahid Afridi and, you know, guys that were, had big, big characters and, you know, guys that everyone was like, wow, he, he's going to win a game. And yeah. he just took them down. He was, he was so good. Ridiculously good. Brilliant. And you're, you're quite good pals with him, I, I think. I, is that right? Yeah. I mean, I've, you know, we've always, I think, you know me, I'm pretty laid back and... <laughs> and you know, easy to get on with. Um, yeah, we've always got on. You know, I, I've i never, you know, you know, there's been a lot of talk about KP as a character and how he is, but you take people on face value and he's always been amazing with me. And uh, you know what? It's one of the hardest trainers I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, the shots that he played were no fluke. He would practice those. And he was always really good with the guys that were making the debuts. You know, he'd always go out of his way to talk to them and, and help them along and sort of get rid of the nervousness and, try and help them as best he can. He was very clued in in terms of his cricket and how he wanted to play cricket. And, you know, I can't say anything bad about KP. He was, yeah. he was absolutely awesome. 
Yeah, now a lot of people have gone on record and said the same as you, Siddy. Now, away from KP, Dave on the live stream has asked, Hi Ryan, are you what what are your plans for the future? Well, big question. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, this you know, this year I was gonna be in terms of unfortunately with the COVID and the situation, I was gonna be doing a bit of commentary and um hosting for events companies, you know, during the cricket season, like test matches and blah blah blah. Um, I've always thought of doing a little bits, but you never kind of know what the future holds. You know, when I retired in 2017, I was, you know, called up by Alex Stewart to coach Surrey and then Dancing on Ice came around. So you you kind of don't know. Um, I'm just enjoying and, and doing bits here and there. But I'd, eventually I would like to obviously mentor or be a consultant in terms of bowling coaching further down the line. That would, you know, I want to stay in the game. You know, it's given me so much pleasure over the years. I want to like put something back as well. Brilliant. And you said you um, spent some time at Surrey. It's obviously well documented. But how was that? Did you enjoy coaching with Surrey? Big club. Yeah, it was great. It was it was weird because you you retired one season and then all of a sudden you're coaching the very next season. And uh, it was a bit odd to start with. You know, you find yourself bowling every delivery and you you know you're on the other side of the rope and you you're analysing and looking on the computer. But I just tried to be very chilled with the with the lads. You know, they were all they're all professionals and. I just tried to mentor them, and and if they needed me or a shoulder to cry on, then I was there. Yeah. But I was horrendous with a mitt. Honestly, don't give me a mitt any time. <laughs> the ball, I've never known the ball swerve. Now I understand because I used to think Dizzy at Yorkshire was was pretty pretty pissed every morning because <laughs> he used to miss so many balls. And now I understand why it's a horrendous job. I don't want to do a mitting ever again if I can help it. It was a nightmare. <laughs> Very good. Now, Emily Newton on the live stream has asked us, which current England player would you most like to play with that you didn't play with, obviously? I mean, I like I like Joffre Archer. He's got everything that you want in a fast bowler. Yeah. Kind of like a Steve Harmison. You know, he, he, he's got pace. Um, he can swing the ball. He seems the ball. He, he looks like he enjoys his cricket. Um, he can bat as well. So probably uh, a Joffre Archer. For me, I'm a bit biased because I'm a left armer. I'd <laughs> like to see left armers play a little bit more regular um, in the test team. Joe, hint, hint. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, there's, there's such a great side out there. You can probably go to one to thirty players now in this current England setup that you you want to play play alongside. Yeah. They're all brilliant. You know, the absolute athletes as well. They can all bat ball field, which is why England is so strong now. Yeah, absolutely true. And Joffre Arch is certainly very exciting for all the Barmy Army and all the fans as well. Now, uh, moving on to Ben Kay on the live stream. He has asked us, um, what's more nerve-wracking? Um, again, World T20 final or picking a home question on Question of Sport? <laughs> home question. Home <laughs> question is much... I mean... Tough as a Matt Dawson, always have a divvy up, I think, who, who they don't want. When my name's announced that I'm going to be on Question of Sport, they're like, you can have him because he's absolutely rubbish. So, I, I don't know, home question. World Cup's much easier. <laughs> Very good answer. Very good answer. Now, Kate Holdsworth, Dutchburg Kate. Um, but now, yep. the, what? She's a Yorkie, Yorkie supporter. True Yorkie and a proper Barmy Army follower as well. Now, she's asked you, what shampoo are you using these days? Now, this is a question I wanted to ask you as well. I'm a big fan of the long yeah. hair. Well, I was, seeing I've been bored at home, I was going to bring a new brand of shampoo called Le Poodle. <laughs> um, but it unfortunately hasn't taken off quite yet. Um, so I'm not bothering patent it just yet. But um, I don't know. You know what? I don't tend to wash my hair that much. I'm a bit of a... I'm like Frank Gallagher off Shameless. I'm a bit of a scruff, to be honest. Very good. But if it, if it was shampoo, I don't know, any any old any old shampoo. But I don't know if people know, but I've had a few plugs in the front. Um, <laughs> I've had a new bit of a hairline at the front when I was on Dancing on Ice. I got asked if I'd be interested in um, getting rid of the uh, the receding hairline. So, so yeah, it's, a bit, it's a bit weird. It's a bit weird. I'm having to comb it every night and put laser on it and everything. So... What is it about yeah. cricket and um, hair laser? Did you use Michael Vaughan's discount code or was it? It was, it was Vaughan's, well, as he got shares in that company, it was Vaughan's company, so it's he's not falling out yet. But for, when I turned up, I thought they'd just give me a carpet and staple it on my head if it were Vaughan's. Uh, <laughs> well, Vaughan's lap, but, no, it's, it's all, everything's all right, but yeah, I just, I don't know, with my hair. Everybody goes, oh, what do you put in your hair? But, for a any, any, old, any old rubbish. 
Well, I've, I've also heard that um, a few of the lads in the, that have been in change room with you say that you used to carry a lot of toiletries and they, a lot of grooming used to go into it. I don't know if they're just winding you up, but... A lot of t- I used to carry... Because it was so... It was ridiculous. Honestly, I looked... When I look back at the pictures, I looked horrendous. Like, no wonder I got abused on the boundary, like Shirley Temple and Roger Daltrey and get your hair cut, where's your caravan, your jippo? Like, honestly, I, I can understand why now. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, um, I, I recall Blowers calling you String Fellow. Can you remember that one? Oh, yeah, String. Oh, actually, I've got a picture. Do you all want to see? <laughs> I actually look I actually look like the dog. <laughs> It says your owner, owner looks like the dogs, don't they? Well, there you go. <laughs> I actually look like that. <laughs> Which is Ryan's side bottom, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I think the dog's hair is shorter. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, ridiculous. Uh, what was I thinking? Quality. Embarrassing. Quality. Now, um, Jack Francis has asked, best player that you've played uh, played with and against? Who's the best player you've played with Okay. best against? Uh, I would have to say the best player I've played with would have to be Darren Lehman. Yeah. Um, purely because he was absolute. I can't tell you how good he was. I mean, a few few times he'd, he'd get out for a low score in the first innings and he'd always come off the field, this little rotund Australian who never trained, just loved loved playing and batting. Um, and he'd just sit in his wide fronts and eat a margarita pizza, have a pint of Coke, and he'd be there with his fag in his gob. Man. And on many occasions he'd say, don't worry, lads, I'll get 100 second innings. And he, you know what? I can't recall him not. He was He was that good. I mean, he broke all the records for Yorkshire, and he was just—he yeah. was absolutely immense as a as a player and as a as a bloke as well. In terms of probably the best player I've played, it, you have to say probably Tandulkar or a, a Ponting, you know, those type of players that yeah. you know have come with hero status. And you know, it's always nice you you know the memories that you make, like he's pitting your wits against those players, you know, trying to get them out. Um, so that's. You know, that's always nice. Not a, not a bad not a bad list of people there, City. Now, um, you may or may not know, but I, in this, on the intro to the other live stream that we did earlier, um, I introduced the fact that we were with Opening Up Cricket, who are a mental health charity um, that are based on cricket. And um, yep. they ask a couple of questions every week. And the first one is, during your career, how did you manage to look after your mental health? I think lots of... Lots of different, lots of different things, really. You know, trying to trying to keep busy, and um, you know, like my my love was rugby league. So away from the cricket, I tried to do as much as I possibly can. Keep yeah, keep the mind active constantly. Um, you know, if if I'd had a bad day on on the on the pitch, you know, my drive home was like twenty minutes. So I would I would have time to myself. I would probably think of how my day's gone, what I could do better, and I try and forget about it then. You know, I know cricket and sport is the be all and end all for some people, and you know you want to win at all costs and you train hard yeah. every single day. But for me, it's it's about having fun and enjoying, and not you know not getting too carried away. And what will be will be. If you've had a bad day, you know what? So what? You know, there's worse things in life. And you know, I always viewed it as I'm very lucky. You know, I've got two kids and you know great family, and I just try to look it on a on a positive note and not not get too down about about things yeah no very good answer that city now um another question from opening up they've asked what's the difference for a bowler at international level compared to county level what's the difference like yeah i'd I'd probably say not in terms of bowlers i think it's more your workloads and the scrutiny that you're under mentally and physically you know five-day test cricket is called test match cricket for a reason yeah. You know, it tests you every aspect of, of your game. Um, you know, you've got the TV cameras on you, um, criticising you. You've got social media now. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's totally changed and it is it is really tough. So for me, you know, playing Test Match cricket is the hardest form of the game. You know, I know T20 and everything now, everybody you know, loves T20. But I think you can go out there and have more fun and express yourself. Whereas Test cricket, you, you are under the pump. You know, constantly yeah. for five days. Yeah, no, that's a very good answer. And you can see, um, hopefully we'll be watching some test cricket this summer, but who knows? Fingers crossed. Now, um, if you've got more questions, guys, on the live stream, please get them in now. I'm going to ask Sidi about three or four more questions and I'm going to let him go and get back to his red wine. Now, who, if you could, 
pick two players throughout your whole career to isolate with for the duration, who would they be and why? <laughs> Oh, have to be Swanee. Yeah, Swanee, because he never ever shuts up. He keeps you entertained throughout the whole day, every day. And then that's a great question. You know, I'd have to say someone. I don't know, like, there's been so many characters that I've that I've played with. Um, probably Steve Harmison for one reason, because he always brings every time we played. He used to bring a massive suitcase of jellies and sweets. <laughs> so. At least he would, and he'd always have his Netflix of or DVDs. Um, that was probably the most important thing to him, you know, apart from his bowling boots. So probably Steve Harmison as well, because he's a, he's a great lad too. Brilliant. I can't imagine a house with you, Swanee, and Steve Harmison for seven weeks. I'm sure it'd be entertaining. Oh my goodness! <laughs> right, Gary Help. Taylor has asked us. Which is the best Yorkshire player in the past and present day, in your opinion? Who's the best Yorkshire player in the past and present day, in your opinion? Yeah, well, I'm going to, you know, I know I mentioned Daryl Lehman's overseas. I mean, there's so many. For me, probably Goffey. I idolised Goffey growing, growing up it, purely because, you know, not about what he'd done in Test cricket and, you know, his performances, how he was as a bloke. And I always liked, I think, People in sport love triers and people that go out there and give it 100% and always enjoy themselves. You know, you can yeah. you could see that. And I think he sort of that epitomised what how cricket and sport should be played. You know, he loved the laugh. He loved, but he always, you know, very competitive. So for me, Darren Goff, um, you know, loved him dearly. And, you know, he's a great bloke. And, you know, you hear him talk about football and all <laughs> kinds of stuff on top. I, I don't know how he does it, to be honest. That, I don't. It, does he know what football is? <laughs> I think he does get slated sometimes, doesn't he? But it's quite. Funny. He does. Oh, he'll, he'll love it though. He'll just laugh. Yeah, he, he does. He'll go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Very good. Now, City, we've had a question asked by John. What's the best practical joke you've played on a teammate or seen being played? Oh well, to this day, Jack the Snipper. <laughs> um, he was legendary in the, I'm sure Rooty and the boys are yeah. talking about Jack the Snipper. No one knows to this day who he is. And he used to snip your socks, underpants. You'd you put your underpants having a horrendous day in the field and you, you're meeting two veg, you'd be hanging out and you, your shoes would be snipped and you couldn't go home in any of your gear because it'd just be cut in half. <laughs> um, so no one knows. I think it's Anthony McGrath. Um, but to this day, no one knows who it is. Well, probably the biggest prank I've played on, um, when I was, as you know, I had long hair and I loved my products and I always had like, a toiletry bag with me. And our physio, uh, Craig Smith, hid my toiletry bag when I was at, at Knott's. And I was so peed off. I was oh, I was so mad. So we played at Henley, actually, the following week. Um, so I put his car on bricks. Um, <laughs> but the problem is we lost in two days. So we were driving home and I, I'd actually sat down, had my tea, um, had a glass of red and he was still at Headingley putting his car back, his wheels back on his car. So I tell you what, I had a right sweat on when I was doing that, by the way. Good, it took me forever. Quality. Did you? Did he get you back? Well, no, I got him back for nicking my toiletry oh, bag. Of course, never, yeah. I wonder... To that day, I don't think he went anywhere near me because he, he knew what would happen. Yeah. But the lads used to terrorise... Uh, he used to terrorise McNeil at Trent Bridge as well. Dave also used to nick his towel when he was in the shower. So he'd have to walk through all the lads in the dressing room, start ball at naked. Um, and he absolutely hated it. But I think the other best one, I'll tell you this one, is Dave Hussey put McNeil's um, phone number on the free press saying he had um, eight pedigree bulldog puppies <laughs> for sale. And he needed a quick sale because he was moving abroad. And he must have had about a 1,000 calls a day. And you could hear him in his office going, no, I haven't got any pedigree. You can F off. You can... No, it's not. I haven't got any. F off. <laughs> Absolutely quality. Um, no one, if you've got my number, please don't repeat that. Now, Rich Hall has asked you a question. Ryan, I'm a big fan. I'm wondering if you could help me with an issue I'm having. I'm... I'm getting... I've heard of that, Dave. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I know where this is going. I'm getting married. For my stag, do you think I should just go for a pint or end up in Edinburgh handcuffed to a dwarf. <laughs> Cheers, Harley, lad. Uh, well, obviously the latter, handcuffed to a dwarf, which is what I had to do <laughs> in Edinburgh. Um, 
yeah, it was um, it was good fun. Yeah, I went to Edinburgh and the I was just sat there. The lads were firing Guinnesses down my neck, <laughs> and I'm standing there. And this this lovely young lady who was a, a dwarf um, came in the pub, and I knew straight away as soon yeah. as I clocked her, she's gonna come over to me, isn't she? And yeah, she was obviously me being six foot four. She was, yeah. you know, she was really small. So, I mean, it was she was fantastic. She was great fun and. Twice, I think I got I got a drunk as well, so she had the best time ever. I was absolutely <laughs> smashed. So cheers, Holly, for that. Thank you, bud. <laughs> Thanks, um, Holly, for telling everyone in the Barmy Army that very kind. Now, um, only a couple more questions. Um, back to the T20 World Cup final. Um, how important was the captaincy on that day? Obviously, he'd done so well all tournament. How big a part did he play on that day? Yeah, huge. I think it all stemmed from probably the year before. Yeah. Um, you know, Collie then went to the IPL um that that winter and sort of witnessed how how T twenty should be played, you know, the the ins and outs, the variety in the attack, how batsmen approached, you know, the first six overs, very attacking. Um so it came back with new ideas. And I, I mean that changed the dynamics, you know, Collie experiencing that with a number of other players, KP and I think Oi Morgan might have gone on on that IPL, yeah, uh, been on that IPL season, um, and then we, I think we to we went to Dubai first, and we played England A in a few T20 warmer matches, and we played against Keyswetter and Lum, and they absolutely smashed our bowling attack to all parts. It was it was something that no one had ever seen before. Yeah, um, very attacking cricket, and I think Collie and Andy Flower sort of said, "Wow, that is how we want to want to play our cricket." Yeah, and then obviously they were selected, and we we never looked back really. I mean, you know, the cricket that we played, um, I, sp- I suppose we set the bar for how this England team, in a way, yeah, play the cricket. You know, we had all bases covered, great variety, and the top six were so attacking. Um, you know, no bowler had you know had a respite, so it, it was a lot of experience from Collie, and he was brilliant. His captaincy. What I will say is how we trained. I've never been in an England team where we trained and had fun training. Um, it was very relaxed, but we, we trained hard. It wasn't like we were messing around. And that sort of went into our cricket. We we just enjoyed that togetherness and, um, you know, the team spirit. And we, we were, br- we, I mean, you know, we were brilliant that tournament. We, we sort of never looked like losing. Even in the final, you know, going to the ground, looking around, you know, you could see the players. We, it was almost like we knew we'd won. And I know you don't say that in sport, but we, we, I think we knew on that day we would beat Australia because we were just so confident. Absolutely, so true, Sidi. Now, um, there's a watch along, I think, on Sky this Saturday. Will you be um, watching along to that, Sidi? Well, I think I'm. I think I'm doing an interview with Dave Fulton in the morning. Oh, brilliant! Um, for for Sky News for for that watch along. So I probably, you know, I probably will watch it. I have, I've, you know. What? I'll, I'll be totally honest, I've never, ever watched it back. I really haven't. Um, I don't really tend to watch um, myself bowl or anything. I mean, no, I know a few friends and family sort of said, oh, we we saw you on, on Sky doing the, winning the World Cup and stuff. And actually, you weren't too bad. You actually, you were quite good in the field too. So, uh, yeah, probably, I probably will watch it. I mean, obviously, a special moment like that, you, ne- you never, ever forget. So, yeah, I might do. Very special moment indeed, City. Now, thank you so much for coming. Pleasure. Back. And um, very sorry about the little technical problems, but we got there in the end, didn't we? So, um, final message to the Barmy Army, City. No, thank you to the Barmy Army. I mean, I had many special day with the Barmy Army. You know, your support and what you do for charity is absolutely immense. So, you know, well done to everyone and yourselves, and keep up the good work. You know, without your support, you know, the England team probably wouldn't be where they are now. Um, and you are, you know, very very fortunate I suppose as England players to have the likes of you guys and such an amazing following so thanks a lot keep supporting thanks so much Sidi and thanks to everyone that has watched um, this evening Uh, thank you everyone cheers thanks and we'll speak to you all next week if you haven't seen the shows from the previous six weeks go and check them out on our YouTube channel you'll find them there cheers guys cheers